Um, all right, well, thank you. Thank you for that introduction. That was very <laughs> kind. And, uh, and for all the other introductions to this. And thanks, everyone, for being here. Um, uh, so I'm going to frame this talk in terms of peer production. Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I, I guess that term will be familiar to many people here, but uh, just for anyone that isn't, um, by peer production, uh, peer production is a term that basically describes a mode of organization that describes voluntary, voluntary cooperation on the internet. Um, uh, the term was actually coined uh, by Yochai Benkler back in 2002 or 2003. Yochai Benkler is a scholar at um, uh, Harvard Law School, and he's one of my advisors. But um, uh, he's, he, he coined it in this, in this article, which was more or less about free open source software, but it had a, um, he decided to talk for a little bit about this little project um, uh, called Wikipedia, which had at the time created a couple thousand articles, and which uh, he says you know, isn't significant or you know, um, large, but it's still interesting and shows some of the promise that we can see in peer production and these kinds of qualities, right? And I think that you know, history has shown that Benkler could not have chosen a better little project to get excited about back in 2002 um, or 2003. In any case, the um, first thing I'm going to do here is uh, uh, give a short overview of what I'm talking about uh, here. Um, and it's based on unpacking a subtle, but I will argue sort of critically important difference between two questions. The first one, um, Pavel actually, I think, came out here saying we were interested in talking about why Wikipedia works and then describe some of the research here. And I'm actually going to try to poke at uh, this question and uh, talk about the ways in which we can and maybe can't answer that question. Now, um, in any case, I, um, I mean, I'm going to make a distinction that I think that a lot of the work work that's being done here, um, or that's being presented here, is actually more around this question of how Wikipedia works. Now, um, um, this comp conference is testament to the fact that both in academia and beyond, people have done an enormous amount of work, and also in, in Wikipedia communities, to sort of document and understand and explore the question of how Wikipedia works. Um, we can describe in detail both explicit and implicit dynamics in peer production more broadly, but also in Wikipedia in particular. But what I want to suggest um, is that we don't actually know nearly as much, um, uh, uh, we don't know nearly as well how to systematically reproduce Wikipedia's success. We don't know how to make other Wikipedias. And that in that sense, um, um, and, and that although some peer production projects, maybe like GNU Linux, like maybe all the ones you've heard of, have become pretty successful, most are not. And that we don't actually really know why. Um, now, uh, I'm going to suggest that this is a, the second question of why peer production or Wikipedia works um, is, is, is something different. And I'm going to suggest that the bulk of the research that's been done, and actually the bulk, bulk of the work both sort of in academic, in academic work but also in sort of practitioner communities, has really been, um, uh, um, is really actually poorly suited to um, answer this question and actually in some systematic ways can't answer the question. Now, I'm going to try to answer the question, well, not today per se, but uh, I'm going to uh, at least point to some examples of pieces of work which are some, some of which I've done, both, mo mostly because I know it well, not because I think it's the best examples per se, um, but also some work that other people have done. I'll do some research karaoke. Um, uh, uh, and I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about um, how we can go about answering this second question of why peer production works when it does work. Um, uh, and um, I'm going to do that by basically suggesting that, that, that what we need to do is think about failure. Um, um, and I'm going to talk about work that's done exactly that. So, and then, of course, I'm going to encourage lots of you to join me and other people working on this, because I think that that's uh, both part of the process and also, I think, useful for, for, for what we're doing. So all right, let's start out with this first question. Now, I've already suggested that we know a lot about how Wikipedia works. And for me, the point at which this was sort of driven home for me was in 2008. Um, I've, been do, I've been involved in Wikipedia for a long time and had started to do academic sort of research about Wikipedia around this point. And I decided that a nice thing to do at Wikimania would be, I was sort of frustrated by the fact that there were lots of academics that at the time were actually not doing a very good job of talking to Wikimedians or Wikipedians. And this is a great example of, of how that's, um, um, uh, of, 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 of how that's sort of improved. But at the time, there was tons of work going on in academic research about Wikipedia, and no one in the Wikipedia community knew about it. So I said, great, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just basically do like a literature review of all of the papers written about Wikipedia this year, it's in 2008, um, and I'm going to present it at Wikimania, right? Um, so, so I, of course, being a, little, being a little lazy, I sort of like didn't pay that much attention to this. And then three weeks before the conference, decided to do sort of like a, you know, this is, this is a description of what I did. I'm going to write a literature review here. Uh, this is part of my proposal that I uh, submitted. And, and unluckily enough for me, it was accepted because when I went three weeks before to do a search, um, uh, and I did a search for you know basically everything published within the year, I saw some page like this which said, oh yeah, in the last year there have been 800 papers with just with Wikipedia in the title, right? 
So I did the math and I said, okay, I have a 45 minute long talk that would give me 3.4 seconds per paper. Um, uh, and I talk fast, which you now know, um, but I don't talk that fast. Um, um, so I sort of, uh, my compromise was to basically sort of say, okay, great, I'm gonna pick the top like 15 or something, or 15 that I think are really important or relevant or particular particularly interesting for these communities. Um, it's pretty funny, actually. What I did was that the first, I did want to import them all into, into, into Zotero. I use this like bibliographic software. It's free software. It's very great. You should try it. Um, I went to import the Google Scholar document, and I actually got banned from using Google Scholar for like abusing their system because ba Google basically said there's no way that any human could consume this many uh, pieces of research right, so quickly. Um, uh, it's actually very easy to get banned from Google Scholar uh, um, for that way. But in any case, this is, this is, um, um, uh, it's, actually, it's actually not slowing down, and in fact, it's growing. Um, academics have written a lot of papers about Wikipedia, which is someone who tries to stay up to date on this research is something which is frustrating to me. Um, uh, but you can see the sort of growth here, and it's actually more or less stable. We're actually on track to about match or pass the number of papers um, from last year. Um, this year, so it's continuing to grow um, somewhere around, what is it, about 500 papers a year with Wikipedia in the title. Um, and some of these are sort of of this class of paper, which is like, does Wikipedia work, which are more or less asking this question of like, sort of measuring quality and comparing it to some other work. The answer is always yes. Um, uh, Wikipedia works, but the, but the real bulk of these are focused more on this question of how does it work in exactly the ways that Pavel's already sort of um, pointed out, these questions of like looking at dynamics and quantitative and qualitative work, but really trying to understand the processes that are working in Wikipedia communities. But, um, but the answers, of course, on how Wikipedia works don't only come from academia, although that's a place that I like to talk about and represent. Um, we actually, you know, our, the, you know if you, if you want to look, look for people that can know how or has documented how Wikipedia has worked, the best place to look is among Wikipedians themselves. Uh, you could start with the book, How Wikipedia Works. Um, you're like, wow, we, I mean, if, if, it were, if only it were that easy, we, we wouldn't have to have the conference at all, right? Well, you know, there's a book, we can just, we can just, you know, like, you can just buy it. Like, um, uh, look at it there, and, and, it's, and it's written by Phoebe Iris was a former board member of the Wikimedia Foundation, and uh, Charles Matthews, who at the time that he wrote the book, was the top contributor to English Wikipedia, mostly in math articles. He can also tell us how math works. Um, and um, Ben Yates again. So, 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 so the book is, um, uh, there's been tons of work there. The book is very long. It's 536 pages long, something I know because I was asked to review it um, on, with just a few days' notice. Well, actually, they probably asked me before, but I just didn't notice it until a few <laughs> days, um, uh, a few days before. Uh, and I had to write a blurb on there, and I felt that I had to, to uh, need it. And the other interesting thing about reading it was that, that, that um, uh, I like the reviews. Despite the fact that it's so long, the reviews, like an Amazon review says, is just enough you get you started editing, right? Like, uh, <laughs> like with, uh, uh, like, you, um, just, a, just, a, you know, just enough to get you going, right? Um, I thought that's kind of funny, um, but I think it's true. And and uh, uh, th there's an enormous. I mean, if we look at if we look at the kinds of things you need to know with editing. I mean, if we look at other sources of documentation, policy guidelines, and also just like documentation and description is just completely enormous, right? And it's like um, um, uh, on. Uh, I, I was I was just trying to get like a like a count of the number of pages which fall into some category of like documentation. And there's actually I found that I, by the time I reached the page which was the guideline on how to categorize different guidelines um, within Wikipedia. I decided that th this, was, this was not a question I was going to answer like last night as I was preparing for this talk. Um, 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 but, there are, but there are hundreds or thousands of pages of, doc of, of like individual articles um, documentation, many tens of thousands of pages. And that's not counting the fact that there's all the discussion that led to this, which is in the talk pages, it's just like completely enormous amounts here. And it goes from the sort of like the, from the, from the completely brilliant to the, to the sort of like the, 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 from the sublime to the ridiculous, right? Um, I have a friend who's a, um, a law review, uh, she's a, a legal student. She's writing a law review paper about Wikipedia. She, I don't know if you've ever read a law review article, but they like, they're like, if you imagine like footnoting and then take it to like the illogical extreme, like Wikipedia footnoting, that's like a law review paper, right? So she, so she was forced to find, like editor said, we want you to use a citation for the phrase, you need a computer to edit Wikipedia. Right, um, uh, uh, and, 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 and the issue was not that she couldn't find a citation that said that she needed to use a computer to edit Wikipedia. She actually found several citations within Wikipedia about this, and there was an argument about which was the better source on the fact that you need a computer to edit Wikipedia, right? Like, like this is a very well-documented, uh, um, uh, uh, this is a very well-documented um, process. Um, but, um, but uh, 
I want to argue that despite the fact that we know a lot about how Wikipedia works in these ways and in lots and lots of ways that I haven't had the time to even touch on, I want to draw a distinction between this question and, and the, the, the knowledge about why Wikipedia works. Now, for the purposes of this talk, I mean, like, I don't know, it's a kind of semantic of sort of philosophical point. So we don't have to talk about how or why and like which word is better. But for the purposes of this talk, when I'm using these terms, the difference between how and why is the difference between a description of sort of what's going on and a sort of causal statement of what is necessary for like the pro what is necessary for success, right? Like, what are the things that if we took away, Wikipedia wouldn't work? Or if they had never been there in the first place, Wikipedia wouldn't work. And that's actually a really important difference because there are lots of reasons, both sort of commonsensical and also research reasons, um, uh, um, to believe that not everything that Wikipedia does is necessarily an important piece of the recipe for its success, right? Um, I mean, I could talk about, uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the dumb things Wikipedians do that may not be necessary for its success. People have probably seen the page, some of you have probably seen the, the page for lame edit wars. Um, it's just like, like lame edit warring, um, people arguing about like crazy stuff happens all the time on Wikipedia. Here's just, I mean like uh, trying to pick an example for this was very hard. This is one of my favorite because I, I will refuse to mention whether or not I was involved in this in any way. Ken Masters, um, uh, uh, Ken Masters is, uh, is a, a character in Street Fighter 2, right? He's the guy in red, he's the best player. Um, uh, um, um, th uh, there is an enormous argument in English Wikipedia about how tall Ken Masters is. Now, I don't mean how many pixels tall he is, because that's actually an empirical question that we could answer. I mean how tall in centimeters is the character who does not exist, right? He's a character in the video game, how tall he is, right? Now, of course, it's hard to find reliable sources on this because he doesn't exist, and there are different sources because he doesn't exist of um, um, uh, 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 people talking about this. But that doesn't stop Wikipedians from arguing at length, getting banned over arguments about how tall Ken Masters is. Right um, now, does Wikipedia succeed because people because tens, people spend tens of thousands of hours arguing over things that almost everybody in the world thinks are stupid? Um, uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, is that an important piece of success? Maybe. I mean, it's not. It's not clear that it isn't. Um, um, is uh, um, or does Wikipedia succeed in spite of the fact that there's lots of lame edit warring? Right? Or is it just not really related? We don't actually know. Um, um, we know that it happens. Um, um, barn stars, here's, an, here's a more positive example, right? Wikipedians give a lot of barn stars, right? Maybe not as many as people think, but they give a lot of barn stars. You see, I have a barn star on the back of my laptop. I gave it to myself, which is like the first rule against you're never supposed to do that. Um, uh, give yourself barn stars. Wikipedia gives us barn stars. And there's good evidence that barn stars actually have a positive effect in terms of the behavior of individuals. Some, some, some researchers, I don't know how they got permission from their like ethics board to do it, but they went around giving random barn stars to people um, uh, uh, um, in the last year, and they found that actually the people who got the barn stars ended up receiving more barn stars and working, working much better in the result, right? So that's, that's a great example that barn stars are working within Wikipedia. Um, and in some of my research, I've shown that this effect only applies to a subset of, uh, so to a certain subsets of readers. You can talk more about that if you want, but, but, but it basically doesn't work for everybody. It only works for certain people, and it may even have a bad effect for, the people, for, for, for others. But, but my, my point here is organizational and more fundamental. It's not really about barn stars. It's does our community or organization succeed because of barn stars, right? Are they part of our success? Um, or does it succeed in spite of them, right? Like are barn stars actually like pot potentially harmful? I don't know. Evidence is kind of against that. That wouldn't be my belief, but it's possible, right? Or does it simply not matter? Is it not a critical issue? Um, um, looking at the barn stars, uh, looking at the effect of barn stars on individuals is a great example of like what I consider great research in Wikipedia, um, on, on Wikipedia. But but it can't. But but looking at the effect of barn stars on individuals can't tell us on the organizational level if Wikipedia is successful because of barn stars. Um, to answer this, we need some hypothetical Wikipedia without them, right? Now. There are real consequences to this. Um, there are real consequences to this difference between sort of thinking about individual motivations, like in terms of barn stars, and um, questions of organizational level success. Understanding the how of Wikipedia means that we can have websites um, that, like, basically, we can create new Wikipedias or things like Wikipedia. Um, not understanding the why means that uh, they often still don't work and. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit that I think that that's the case because we don't understand which part of the how is important. We don't understand which parts of this uh, of these things are actually the the parts that have made Wikipedia work, um, and how these qualities or processes are used by Wikipedia or are um, or how they interact or how they're sort of contingent on each other or need to be used in particular combinations. These sorts of things, right? So here's a here's a here's why it's important. Here's a thought experiment, right? 
Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I want to make successful wikis. It's not actually hypothetical anymore. That's actually true. I do want to make successful wikis. Like I, I, I love wikis and I want to make more of them. Um, and I want them to be as successful as Wikipedia, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a bunch of things that are from Wikipedia, right? I'm going to, I'm going to take uh, the software that runs Wikipedia, right? Um, uh, we'll take MediaWiki. Good thing it's free software. I can just take it and install it on my own system. Um, I'm going to take a bunch of policies um, from Wikipedia. We're going to have barn stars and a bunch of other things. I'm going to go get a bunch of active Wikipedians. Um, uh, in fact, I'm going to, let's say for the sake of hypothetical argument, you'll see how this is becoming not so hypothetical pretty quickly. I'm going to take 37% of, 30% uh, of my users are going to be people who've contributed to Wikipedia. Um, uh, and I'm going to take I'm going to take leadership from Wikipedia. I'm going to take Jimbo Wales and I'm going to take Angela Beasley and I'm going to make them co-founders of my new wiki organization and I'm going to call it Wikia, right? So people who don't know, Wikia, like, that happened, right? Um, uh, uh, all of these things are qualities of wikis in Wikia, which is a for-profit wiki hosting company, which hosts at this point about 260,000 wikis. And which actually, I won't talk too much about this, but is actually that those wikis are now forming the data set that I'm using for most of my research at the moment. But, but, um, but, 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 uh, but, we're gonna, but, 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 but Wikia actually, but Wikia sort of actually happened, and it really does look like that. Um, and Wikia has had many successes, right? Um, WoW Wiki, uh, the World of Warcraft Wiki, a lot of gaming and entertainment stuff. The Harry Potter Wiki is very big. The Star Wars Wiki is very big. Memory Alpha, the Star Trek Wiki, the Encyclopedia, very funny. Uh, it's like not true, but an encyclopedia. Um, uh, um, uh, it's very good. It's one of these places where, like, if you ban people from Wikipedia, they could go and become like very, like, you know, like good contributors, like, uh, like, like positive uh, members of the community. In any case, I'm not trying to criticize Wikia because Wikia has had a number of important successes, but, 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 but none at the level of Wikipedia, and most of them haven't worked out that well. What do people think the median number of contributors are to a wiki in Wikia? Like your average wiki, right? What? See, so five, ten, ten. two. two? The pessimist. You're, uh, uh, you're actually 20. You're actually pretty close. The median is six. Um, uh, 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 you're involved. Yeah, it's like you and it's you and four friends, right? So so uh, um, so so you're in good company. Uh, in fact, you're better than half of them. Uh, um, uh, that's right. So so the, so so. So, and I'm not trying to criticize Wikia here. Actually, Wikia has done enormously well. They produce many of hundreds, many hundreds of very active, thriving projects. Many of which are actually, in some metrics, doing better than Wikipedia is today, in the sense that they're they're growing and they're doing wonderful, right? Um, 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 but I want to be, um, uh, um, and I want to be clear. There are important differences between Wikia and Wikipedia, right? Wikia runs ads. Wikia is tends to be very focused on specific topics. Um, their notability guidelines are basically non-existent, at least in most um, most wikis, um, or at the very least relaxed. But that's kind of my point, right? Um, because understanding those differences, we might by understanding the differences between the Wikia wikis that have been less successful than Wikipedia and Wikipedia, or by understanding the differences between the more successful Wikia wikis and the less successful Wikia wikis, um, or the more successful peer, or in general, the more successful peer production projects and the less successful peer production projects, we can begin to answer this question about why. Right? Now, I want, to suggest that, I want to suggest that this pattern is common throughout peer production. So, so, so my background, as you've already heard, is in free and open source software communities. I'm, like um, I'm going to be presenting some qualitative work, but like, don't, let, don't get the wrong idea about me. I'm like a hacker. I'm a free software person, um, sort of like through and through. Um, so so um, uh, uh, the, same, the same question, right? What is the median number of contributors to a free software project? And there's lots of ways of measuring this, but they're all the same answer. So median numbers of contributing to a, to a free software project. Any ideas? What? Yeah, like, like uh, we're going to go to some big hosting site, any of them, and we're going to GitHub, SourceForge. Three. Three. Median 6, max 24,000. Uh, <laughs> the max is less than 24,000. The median? Uh, the median, yeah. The, uh, let's see, where's my, go forward, right. One, one, <laughs> right? Uh, 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 the median, a single developer, right? Um, uh, that's for SourceForge. That's for SourceForge, and I've got the same graphs for Google Code, I've got the same graphs for for GitHub, I've got the same graphs for uh, uh, Launchpad, Savannah. Like, what do you want, right? Like, for projects, but not community, for instance, Debian or Fedora. Or uh, uh, the median number of contributors to a Debian package will also be one. Um, uh, uh, the, the, um, so, so, but anyway, you're, you're right. This is a little unfair. 
Um, so let, let, um, mo be, because, because on SourceForge, anyone can, host a pro can put up a project. And they don't even have to have any code, right? So let's, let's make this, let's limit it to just projects which are mature and like mature projects, right? That's a little more of a fair comparison. Projects which have released many times, which are successful in the eyes, on average, in the eyes of their creators. Median number of contributors to a successful project. Three? Uh, let's see. Uh, if I can move forward. Uh, this is making a lot of suspense. Uh, one, right? Like the graph, this is actually like, it's really amazing here because if you go look, like the graph almost looks exactly, the only thing that changes are the, the, the numbers on the, uh, the axis, right? Um, like there's less of them, but the distribution is completely the same, right? Okay, but let's look, you're right. Let's, let's, let's successful by number of downloads. What is the median, so let, things that have been downloaded 100 times, how many, how many uh, median number? Down, top 10% top 10 downloaded 100 times. Ten or fifteen? Any other ideas? One. The pessimist. Two. two. It's two. <laughs> it's two. Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. I had the slide. It's as if we've communicated before, but we didn't. Um, uh, um, so right. The median number of contributors, um, and, and the numbers are very similar if we look at Google Code or GitHub or many of these places. This is like a law of nature. This distribution here. Like, like. I, I mean, I, 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 as I, I love, I love data. Um, and so, like, I mean, I just, I can just, like, stay up late at night, like, doing these graphs, but it gets boring because they all look exactly the same. The distribution <laughs> is, like, um, um, the distribution is, is, is exactly the same. Now, um, now the vast, now, you know, here's, here's, here's where things get interesting, because the vast majority of what we know about free software is from, like, way out on this tail, right? Nobody studies any of these projects. Like, I mean, to the point where you can, I can go to an audience of free software people, and they've never even, like, they, like they're surprised by this. No one, like, not no one, whoever it was kept guessing one, like, you're that, you're that guy. But, um, um, like, 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 this is not people's intuition, because this is not what we pay attention to. This isn't the software that we use for the most part. Um, we're, we're, what, we, what we know comes way out from the, t from the tail, right? It's the wikis with 25,000 contributors, or in the case, of Wikipedia, hundreds of thousands of contributors, right? Um, what we know is from way out on the tail. Do you want to, I mean, we can, I can take questions now or we can wait till the end. I mean, I don't know how you. Well, maybe I can answer the question now and you decide if you okay. can answer now. Okay. The median number of contributors to a single Wikipedia page. I don't know the answer. Oh, I don't know the name. I don't know it off the top of my head, but uh, I'll bet you it's more than one. But I'll bet you it looks, the distribution looks exactly like that. And it's smaller than we think. Um, uh, um, so, in any case, almost everything we know about wikis is from studies of Wikipedia, right? Almost everything we know about wikis is from studying Wikipedia. Um, and there's one paper that looked at this Wikia, um, that, that looked at like all the other data on um, the, the wikis on, on uh, Wikia. And there's a few other things. Um, there's a few other things out there, but almost all that we know here, right? I've done a bunch of work in remixing communities, right? I've done a bunch of study of remixing communities. I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about that um, towards the end. But like everything we know about remixing like it is from the projects which have actually been remixed, right? It's almost hard to even ask, think about what, a, what is a remix that is not remixed, right? Like the project that is not remixed. Um, it's like the tree falling in the forest when no one's around. Um, um, but, but this is actually really important because like from the perspective of social scientists, like if what we care about is the ability of these projects to, if we care about collaboration, like collaborativeness and what we want to explain is the collaborativeness, then this is a big problem because it means that we're selecting on our dependent variable. And that's like a, uh, if you say that like a, in a group of like sociologists, I'm kind of a sociologist, like everyone's like, ooh, like you, someone accused someone of selecting on their dependent variable. But just to be very clear what this means, like, like, like um, I mean, I want, because this is actually, you know, if you take away one thing, this is actually really important, right? Here's my model. It's not a model that I really believe. Do I really believe this? I don't think I really believe this. Here's a model for, uh, uh, here's a model for like why people contribute to like a wiki, right? And it's going to say that people, we have the number of contributors is sort of a function of the amount of interest in the topic. That, that I believe. Um, so like Star Wars wiki is big because lots of people like Star Wars, like, you know, the, you know, whatever, Debian wiki, sad face, is less popular because no one's interested in Debian, um, uh, plus the number of barn starts that you give, plus whether or not you have Jimbo involved, right? Like some linear function of these things. And, and it's not important. This isn't a real model. But the important issue is, is that the point is that if we care about predicting, about, about like testing a theory, or um, about, about um, or, or even just like creating a theory about why people are, where the contributors are coming from, then we need variation in contributors, right? We need the unsuccessful ones so that we can compare the successful ones and the unsuccessful ones. And for the most part, in our communities, in our research, and in our practice, we don't have those. Or at least, you know, we create a wiki, it fails, and we just stop paying attention to it because, hey, it failed, right? Um, um, and that that's an important, and, and, and that's an important thing, and that I, and, and that I want to argue that what we need to do is study failure in peer production. So, 
Um, what I'm arguing here for here is, you know, as I think is becoming clear, a systematic is, is for the systematic study of peer production failures in a way that will hopefully build an understanding of peer production success. Um, and uh, what I want to argue is that this is really sort of the, I mean, it's actually important to have this good knowledge about how peer production works, or else we can't phrase questions which could possibly answer the second one, right? If we don't have a good understanding of what's going on, then we can't, then we, we don't even know what to test for. So it's, an so it's very important that we do that research. But we're at the stage where we have that big graph of all those papers about Wikipedia, where we actually now know a lot about this. And it's time to start thinking, and it's time to start thinking seriously about, about how we can reproduce it. And I'll come back and talk about why I think that's important later. Later, but I think that that's sort of the way I started. Now, to show you what I mean, I want to focus on a series of examples. And these examples are three pieces of research, um, two of which I've done, one of which I'm doing the karaoke for. And they don't know, the authors don't know that I'm doing this. So, um, uh, uh, but they should be happy because I'm like advertising their stuff. Um, um, now, uh, but what I'm going to do is focus on work that I think is doing this. Because it's not like nobody's doing this. And there's lots of other people who are doing it as well. But I want to I throw these out there as examples of the type of work that will help get at these questions. Because it's the type of work that I hope that you'll all join me in trying to do and trying to answer these questions. Um, and I've got three of these little postcards. And I'm not going to be able to talk about them in depth. But I'll at least give you a hint about what they're doing and maybe a little bit of their results so that you can understand what I'm talking about. So here's my three research postcards. Um, the first is a paper that uh, I've been working on for about a year and a half, and this will give you a complete wrong idea about the type of research that I do because this is a qualitative based study um, um, called Almost Wikipedia. Um, and the methodology is that, uh, uh, um, and, and, uh, and, and I'll say, it, we'll see, it. we'll move forward before I talk about the methodology. The question is very simple why, why did Wikipedia succeed and not all the failed Wikipedias, right? So, what I did was I went and I found, I mean, like very explicitly, like motivated by, by some like very, not very well thought out version of what I've tried to motivate you with so far, um, uh, uh, I basically said, OK, where are all the failed Wikipedias? And I went and I found eight projects which had been created before Wikipedia, which were online collaborative uh, encyclopedia projects created before 2001. Um, uh, and they were, these were all in English. There were a few other that were in English. I had trouble dealing with those because I didn't speak the language in most cases. But this, as far as I know, is all of them. If you know of more, I'd really like to know about them. Um, because I'm still revising this paper, but I'm um, uh, happy to do it. You've probably heard of a couple of them. You've heard of Newpedia, because it was created by uh, uh, the people who created Wikipedia. Everything 2 was a project that's been around for, um, for a while and still exists in some form. And the other one you might have heard of is the, is the H2G2, which is uh, created kind of by Douglas Adams. Um, it's like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Earth Edition. It's an encyclopedia about Earth, but written in the style of the Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, and so what I did was I've gone out and I found the people who created these in all but one case. Um, uh, I actually found them in all cases. Um, and, and then interviewed them in all but one case. And then brought together tons of material that I could find in terms of archival stuff, conversations about creating it, early examples of the projects. Sort of built the, a big data set with as much as, um, as I could. And then also sort of talked to these people. And actually they're really interesting to talk to because if you want to know people that have been spending the last 10 years thinking about why Wikipedia succeeded, like these are like, <laughs> like, the, people, like the, the, people, the people who created something which is like almost exactly like Wikipedia. This project, the Info Network, if I, it looks more like Wikipedia does today than Wikipedia did when it started, right? It's just like, it's, 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 it's shocking. Some of them are very, very similar. Um, um, so these people had a lot to say um, in most cases. I was like trying not to ask the question. I didn't want to ask like, until they're supposed to be open in an interview, so I wanted to talk. So I didn't want to ask like, why did Wikipedia succeed and not your project? But like everyone told me like immediately and repeatedly the entire time. <laughs> um, uh, they were very interested in the question. Um, so, 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 uh, and so what I did was I, 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 I basically talked to people and I came up with four sort of results. And these are results that I can't test in the sense that this is just, these are just ideas. But they're, well, I mean, they're not, they're not, not that I can test using these data. Um, I have additional data which I can use to, taste the, to test this. Um, that's something that I'm working on. But this is the four sort of answers. Um, uh, the four things that came out of the interviews. Um, uh, the first was that Wikipedia attracted contributors because it was built around a familiar product. Um, and I'll talk about that one in more depth. So if you don't understand, that's fine. Just hold on. Um, the second was that Wikipedia attracts contributors because it was focused on substantive content development instead of technology. Wikipedia was the only project, including Newpedia, that didn't write its own software. The only one. It was the only one, um, with the exception of Newpedia, which was created by the same people, um, which, uh, which didn't have, um, sorry, which, which 
was not created by technologists, right? Wikipedia was by far the least technologically focused of all the projects. And it makes sense. What happened is the Wikipedia founders were very involved on substantive, getting substantive content, whereas everyone else was sort of improving the technology so it would make it easier for people to contribute. And their projects were, in most cases, easier for people to contribute to. But you know what? It didn't matter because they didn't have anyone contributing in the first place, right? They didn't do the bootstrapping problem. Um, um, and, and, and it was a, a very big deal. Um, uh, a third thing was is that Wikipedia uh, attracted contributors as opposed to some of the alternatives because it offered low transaction costs associated with participation. It was very easy for people to do these like drive-by edits on Wikipedia in ways that it weren't in the others. And then the fourth sort of hypothesis is that Wikipedia attracted contributors because it de-emphasized attribution and social ownership um, uh, of, uh, of content. So the idea is that the fact that you didn't have a name on a particular page. There weren't authors for the most part, at least not, it's like very hard. If you want to find out who, I mean, this is actually a tough computer science problem, like finding out, um, like people have their dissertation studying how to find out like who produced a particular piece of text in Wikipedia very efficiently, right? It's like a, not an easy thing to do. I mean, if you're Wikipedians, you've like, you know, because you've tried to do it by hand, um, but it's also hard for computers to do it. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, but Wikipedia, by basically just sort of like, like de-emphasizing social um, attribution, they, did, they had low ter territoriality in a way that really worked. I'll give you an idea of what this first one meant, this familiarity, is just an idea of what these hypotheses look like. And if you're interested in reading more, um, this material is online. I actually have a whole hour-long talk that you can find on the Berkman Center for Internet and Society's website. Um, uh, it's at Harvard, uh, at Harvard Law School where I gave a talk that's like this. And then some journalist came along and wrote like a, like a summary of my talk, which is like better than like my paper, like so much better and more clear than my paper. Because um, they like, I'm like, it's great. Can you come to all my future talks and also summarize them? <laughs> like, um, um, uh, uh, but I recommend you check that out. Um, um, so, so, so anyway, many of the failed attempts sort of tried to expand on this encyclopedic frame. So the idea here is that everything too said, you know, described itself as a flexible web database. Right, which tries to find the best way to store and link ideas. The result, it's absolutely crazy. Right? They, they, they like bent over backwards to not say what they were. And the reason is very explicit. The founders didn't want to constrain the nature of, the, of their production to some like, existing theme. They said, why should we, you know, we're not, we're not Britannica. We, don't, we, can, we can be as big or as long as we want. We can have everything in it, right? Let's just, try, let's, let's, why should we sort of try to close it off? Similarly, the info network said, I don't think I conceived of it like, let's put an encyclopedia online. I was probably like, this is going to be an exploration, and we're going to figure out what a reference work online looks like, right? Um, this idea of really sort of expansive um, definitions, many of these other projects did. Um, and this caused big problems. So I already mentioned the, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Earth Edition, right? Um, uh, they, uh, 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 they had huge problems, even though they were like an encyclopedia, except a little bit funny. Like, people couldn't get it, right? So people would show up and they'd say, this is a quote from one of their founding members, said, one of the problems was that people would be writing completely fictional stuff about the universe, you know, about the Hitchhiker's universe. And we'd go, no, 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 you're not getting it. This is for real people. This is about the real world. Then what they did at the same time was that they'd also do stuff about the real world, but try and write it from the point of view of an intergalactic guide. So we get articles about soccer that would start with, on the planet Earth, which is the third planet from the solar system, Sol, the humans like to play blah, 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 blah. Shut up, all right? It's like, this is going to be read by humans who live on Earth. We had piles and piles of that shit, and we had to shovel our way out from under it, right? Um, so, they, so they did a bunch of this, um, a bunch of this work, and what they, uh, uh, and, and, and this is sort of, the, this is sort of the, the basic conclusion here, is that, is that Wikipedia, um, is, that, is that we can think of what's being produced by these projects as sort of being innovative in the way that we do it, or innovative in the nature of what we're trying to build. And Wikipedia was the only project that said, if you've ever picked up Britannica, you know exactly what it is that we're trying to build. Um, um, you don't, I mean, like, it's true. There's all those thousands of pages of documentations, but try this. You don't actually need to read any of them. You can win, like, any argument if you just say encyclopedic, encyclopedic, right? If you know what an encyclopedia article reads like, you basically know what neutrality is. If you know what kinds of things are in an encyclopedia, you know basically what notability is, right? Um, and the fact that there was this existing thing that people could point to and know that it was what they were trying to build was enough for people to, 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 get, a, to get a real sort of head start in sort of working on it. The projects that deviated from that really struggled. And the ones that, tr the ones that tried to say, like, these are the ones that tried to say, we're going to build the old thing. We're going to build Britannica, but we're going to do it um, in the old way, and we're going to do it for free. Nobody showed up to write for them. Um, and the ones that said, we're going to do this really different thing in a really different way, they really struggled as well. People need something to sort of like latch on to. And, and, um, and this is one of the sort of big takeaways that I came from, from that research. Um, postcard two. This is a book, uh, this is not my work, Charles, Charlie Schweik and Robert English. This is a book that's going to be published by MIT Press in the next couple months. Um, it's called Internet Success, which every time I hear it makes me think of like 
like the <laughs> success baby. Um, uh, uh, um, but but uh, uh, but I mean, like, every every time I hear internet, I'm like, oh no, like it's a really good book with a really bad name. Um, um, it's a study of SourceForge projects, and what they do is exactly this. They look at all of the different projects in SourceForge, all of those failures, that whole, not the long tail, the tall head, is that the opposite of a long tail? Um, uh, uh, and, and, and as a way of building up, building these questions, right? So they consider projects in two stages, and I'm, I know less about this. The book hasn't come out yet, but I, I have a copy. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, initiation in sort of mature stages, and they test a series of hypotheses, right? What are the factors that are associated with project success when you're starting out? What are the projects which are um, associated with success when you're a mature project, like sort of sustainability going on, right? And what they find is that license choice doesn't matter, programming language doesn't matter. Actually, what they find is that most things don't seem to matter. Um, uh, very much. You basically, you're doomed anyway. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, uh, no, but they find more than that. Leadership seems to, seems to matter a lot. Um, and that they actually can point to certain behaviors that leaders um, can do, like defining project scope and so on and so forth, that actually have a very, that are actually very strongly associated with, with success at both early stages and um, moving onwards within Wikipedia. I'm sorry, within, within uh, free and open source software projects. All right, postcard three. This is the final one. Um, is some work from uh, uh, a research community called Scratch. And this is um, some collaboration that I've done with uh, uh, Andres Monroy Hernandez, who uh, uh, was at the MIT Media Lab and is now at Microsoft Research. I know it's like embarrassing for me. To, no, but he's a very good guy, very good guy. Um, uh, and this is some forthcoming work, uh, which is looking at um, uh, the, uh, which is looking at, at, at these sort of dynamics, like generativity, questions of what stuff becomes remixed in a remixing community. Now, Scratch, if you don't know, you should go try it out. It's really, really cool. It's a programming language, um, uh, which is, you have these blocks and you sort of like snap them together to make programs, so that's a program. And then you use the programs to maneuver these guys, uh, maneuver your characters around some little thing. And the idea is made for kids. The average age is 12 or 13. There are kids as young as six who are making some pretty sophisticated projects. You can't make a syntactically incorrect program. I mean, you can make a program that doesn't do what you want, but uh, you can't make a program that, that, that gives you an error. Um, and it's very, it, it's very, very cool, great way to learn programming. Um, but Scratch is also a remixing site. With, with, somewhere hidden in that file menu is the ability to publish your project on the Scratch website. Every project published is available under a free culture license. It's like Creative Commons, it's the same, same as Wikipedia. Um, and, uh, and, and, and anyone can come and download any project and remix it. Everything is remixable on the site. That's the whole point. But of course, what, what is the median number of remixes that a project in Scratch gets, right? Um, we've been down this uh, result. Uh, the result is one, right? The median is one, right? Like, like the vast majority, the vast majority of, 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 of remixes in Scratch, um, uh, sorry, the vast majority of projects in Scratch, it's a remixing site. Scratch is a reference to like scratching records. It's like remixing, right? It's the whole point. And the vast majority of Scratch projects are not remixed. Only a small portion, about 10% will ever in their life be remixed. Um, and that's this, um, uh, and, and, and so that's, that, that's for us was our sort of the question that we sort of started out with. And, um, uh, the, and, and, what we, and what we found was that the majority are not collaborative at all, and we went to look at that question. And the answer was, what we found, were that projects are more likely to be remixed when they are complicated, that is lots of code and media, um, created by high-status creators and sort of cumulative remixes of remixes. And the important thing about these is that, is that, is that Scratch is a community that, that, that we, I should say we, my, my partner, uh, my, my, my research partner, Andres, it's like a, it's, it's a project that he controls. So we can actually make changes to the site to help sort of increase levels of remixing, right? We can, we can reward people with status, which is something that they've done. They've created new status-based incentives and new methods of sort of status giving within the site as a way of encouraging remixing, and it works. Um, they can actually drive increased collaboration by understanding the nature of the process, understanding what works and what doesn't. Um, this is a paper which uh, will be published soon. You can email me um, now and I'm happy to send you a paper. I'll put it on my website, um, probably in violation of all kinds of rules that I, um, um, but uh, the important thing here in this paper was we found a big trade-off. And this is actually, this is like, that was the happy news. This is the sad news. Um, is that each of these factors is also associated with less original forms of remixing. That all of the things which result in more collaboration basically result in weaker collaboration or seem to be associated with it. Um, so, that the, so that the types of design decisions that you can make will have this big trade-off in the sense that people will be making, you know, uh, they'll be making changes to less code. They'll be changing less images. They'll be doing things like that. Um, uh, let me just show you one thing quickly. Uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is an example of a Scratch project. This is a cool spaceship game where you draw things here. And then this is an example of a remix. This is a Star Wars Republican gunship. It's like, it's like, it's like for people that love Star Wars and 
like American right wing politicians. You can like merge them together and you can like shoot other Star Wars planes with like Obama and like Hillary Clinton. Anyway. Um, uh, uh, um, cool. So I wanted to end it with a end with a couple uh, some implications for advocacy because fundamentally that's sort of how I see myself. I mean I'm I'm, I mean, I, I, mean I, am, I am an academic and a researcher, but I also am really sort of driven by these questions of, of, of advocacy as well. And I think that the organizers, I mean, I, I don't just think they told me that part of the reason they were interested in having me here was that I sort of, they saw me as sort of bridging the sort of academic and advocate um, activist camps. So maybe I'm just sort of justifying my own participation. But this is, this is sort of the old, this is a classic model of like peer production advocacy, like free software advocacy, or to some extent also like, like why you should put your stuff in a wiki. These are the arguments people make. They say, if you take your stuff, and you put it online under a free license, the community will come in and improve it, and then you'll have stuff of high quality at the end, right? Like, great. But I hope that, I mean, like, like there's no surprise, because you've already seen the rest of my talk, that I think that there's a problem here, which is that, like, the, the question of how we attract the community or when we attract the community is a pretty important one, and it's something that doesn't always, or maybe, you know, not even maybe, or even usually happen. The community never shows up. And if the community never shows up, then they're not going to improve it and it's not going to lead to inherently better stuff, right? Now, now, now I, gave a, I gave a talk like a, a year or so ago, basically just based on free software, where I showed like basically those power law curves like over and over for like the whole talk. Um, uh, it, wasn't, it didn't go over very well. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and someone came up to me and they basically said like, that was a good talk, but I'm really depressed. Like what, what are we supposed to do, right? Um, uh, like, ah, our stuff sucks, like, sorry, right? Um, um, but I, but I, but I, and, 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 and that wasn't what I was trying to convey. Um, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm very optimistic, right? Because I don't see all those failed Wikipedias or those unremixed projects in Scratch or those, you know, those SourceForge projects that's with like one person sitting around, uh, you know, by themselves. I don't see those as necessarily something to be sad about. Because each of those represents an opportunity to learn um, and to improve our understanding about the way that these projects work and to improve the practice through that process of peer production more broadly. Um, now, as I feel very strongly about, well, many things, as I'm sure you guys now can see. Um, uh, you've now experienced me for 45 minutes and you now realize that uh, I do feel strongly about many things. But I divide the world that I, I divide the world of things that I feel strongly about into empirical statements and principled statements. Um, and I think it would benefit our community a lot to remain very focused on the difference between the two. Now, the graph up here, this model, is an empirically testable model, right? Is peer production better in terms of quality than, like, like is, the, is the free stuff better than the closed stuff? I mean, I don't think that our advocacy should be based on making arguments that it is, because I don't think that it always is. Um, sometimes, sure. Um, and in some ways, probably. And in many ways, in, in many situations, probably not. But there are other principled ways in which peer production is better, always, right? Free culture always empowers people to transcend their roles as uh, sort of consumers of, of media or information to become producers. Right? Wikipedia always allows people to like, stop just being a reader and actually like, define like, the knowledge that, that, that we use to describe our world and understand our world. And, and that is, in my opinion, an important and like one of the most important and politically transformative processes going on in the world today, right? Even if people don't usually take advantage of, the fact that it's there is huge. Um, and, and through this process, peer producers, even the ones um, uh, uh, who are less successful, are changing the world and making, it, making things better. Um, but our ability to do that is much is greatly improved when we make it across that gap, when we figure out how to do this and make it over to the side where we end up with the, with the lots of people producing lots of high quality stuff. Um, and in that sense, um, advocacy that takes this for granted or tries to sort of sweep it under the rug, this, this fact that this is hard, may actually hurt our movement. Um, so peer production isn't always better. Um, um, but it's our responsibility as principled advocates and as researchers to understand why and to help make it better. Um, and if we can understand why and when peer production isn't better and when it is, we will be better able to spread the essential freedoms that peer production allows. And as researchers and as Wikipedians, I hope that you will all join me in this project. <laughs>